The investigation of several icing accidents during the past few years involving turboprop aircraft has implicated ice buildup on the horizontal stabilizer as the cause. The result? An uncommanded pitch down of the aircraft nose or other severe control problems when the flight crew extended flaps. Accident investigations revealed that in one extreme case, elevator forces exceeded 400 pounds. Many regional airline fleets comprised of turboprop aircraft fly at low and medium altitudes right in the middle of the icing environment. With the increasing takeoff and landing cycles of turboprop flights each year, these aircraft are statistically more exposed to potential icing conditions for a greater percentage of flight time than aircraft flying longer and higher altitude routes. Most incidents of tailplane icing have involved regional airliners flying turboprop aircraft. However, large and small general aviation aircraft are also susceptible to ice-induced tailplane stall. In any case, the recovery procedures for tailplane icing are still not well understood. Although the chances of encountering a tail stall condition are infrequent, lack of understanding and awareness of safety techniques can have devastating results. At least 16 crashes have been directly attributed to tail ice and perhaps many more. Often the evidence is unrecoverable. Current icing training focuses on ice formation on the wing and fuselage. Some time-honored procedures such as increasing airspeed that work for a wing stall may actually intensify a tailplane icing problem. This video will probably dispel some long-held assumptions many pilots have about airborne ice. In addition, and more importantly, you will get the very latest information we have on tailplane stall. I have to admit, 15 years ago, when I first started flying icing research, I really wasn't fully aware of just how sensitive the newer, more efficient stabilizers are to ice accretion. Not only in ice collection efficiency, but just how close to or over the ragged edge pilots may find themselves to control loss. So, what's being done to learn more about ice-induced tailplane stall? In 1994, the FAA asked NASA Lewis Research Center to conduct a comprehensive study to measure the aerodynamic performance and controlled degradation associated with ice-induced tailplane stall. The icing research team at NASA Lewis developed a tailplane icing program to address the FAA's request. This program drew upon NASA's unique icing experimental facilities, icing prediction tools, and technical expertise. The tailplane icing program set out to provide an increased understanding of the aerodynamics of ice-contaminated tailplane stall. This information is to be used by the regulatory authorities and by aircraft manufacturers. But in the course of doing our research, we came up with some critical icing information that we believe is valuable to pilots and could very well prevent accidents and ultimately save lives. Airplanes that have been involved in suspected tailplane icing encounters share some common design characteristics. Let's look at these characteristics more closely. Aircraft that use unpowered controls. In other words, those that rely on aerodynamic balance to keep stick forces neutral. Keep in mind, this is where the horizontal stabilizer has a fixed leading edge and the elevator is held in position by an adjustable trim tab. Large flap deflections, which produce large amounts of downwash, resulting in a high angle of attack on the tailplane. Aircraft that use de-icing boots as opposed to an anti-icing system. In most aircraft designs, the horizontal stabilizer has a sharper leading edge than the wing and is therefore a more efficient ice collector. To illustrate this phenomenon, two airfoils were placed inside the icing research tunnel at NASA Lewis. Under most icing conditions, observe how the sharper leading edge of the tailplane has collected a higher percentage of ice than the rounder leading edge of the wing. This means if there is any ice on the wing, there may be significantly more ice on the horizontal stabilizer. If you notice ice on any part of the aircraft, 
you should be aware that ice may already be collecting on the horizontal stabilizer. This condition is further complicated because pilots usually cannot see the tailplane from the cockpit. Tailplane stall due to ice accretion is rarely a problem in cruise flight. During this part of the flight, the horizontal stabilizer is not working anywhere near its performance limits. Consequently, flight crews may not have any aerodynamic clues that ice may be building up on the tailplane until the aircraft configuration is changed. The effects of ice contamination on the horizontal stabilizer are typically noticed during an approach, after flaps are extended and when the aircraft is close to the ground. During this part of the flight, the horizontal stabilizer is working near its performance limits. If the tail stalls at this point, recovery is very difficult.